Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Cave Lion The cave lion, also known as Panthera leospilea, went extinct about 10,000 years ago. But the big cat could be making a comeback soon because researchers from South Korea want to bring it back to life. It's all thanks to a pair of frozen cave lion cubs discovered in the icy wasteland of Siberia. The furry cubs, each one only a few weeks old and about the size of a chihuahua, were found just shy of a decade ago. They were so perfectly preserved in the permafrost that they looked as though they had died only weeks before. The tissue and muscles were still intact, and their hair and claws. Geneticist Huang Wu Suk is hoping to bring the lion back to life by using tissue from these frozen cave lions. However, it could take quite a bit of time. The same South Korean cloning lab also proposed to bring back the mammoth, which has yet to happen. In 2016, they asked the Russian paleontologist in possession of the lions if they could have a full leg. But that was a bit extreme, so they had to make do with some significantly smaller samples sent from Russia. The geneticists are planning to use the extinct animal's DNA to revive it, but it's not as simple as creating an animal out of thin air. Researchers will need to use the material from living lions to create hybrid clones. In the next few years, there could be hybrid cave lions running around. Number 9. Creating a Dragon is it possible for scientists to create a dragon using gene editing technology? A recent essay published in the American Journal of Bioethics claims it is entirely possible. Using a new system of targeted gene editing called CRISPR-Cas9, scientists believe they can construct their own spectacular monsters. What sounds like science fiction is getting dangerously close to reality. The authors of the study, Professor Hank Greeley and Professor Altacharo, said a dragon is entirely within the realm of possibility. It wouldn't be able to fly and most likely wouldn't be able to breathe fire either. The biological constraints are too much for that kind of action. But they admitted a large reptile that looks similar to a European dragon could be created in a laboratory. It would still have wings and it could flap them, but physics wouldn't let it fly. How is this all going to happen with gene editing? CRISPRs are sections of DNA that can be altered to modify what an animal will look like. Scientists have already used the technology to create fish that glow under UV light. They've managed to eradicate horns from certain cattle species. They can also use the technology to manipulate crops, and most recently, create a modified glowing rabbit. Building a dragon is a little more complex than a glowing rabbit. Scientists say they would need to start with a Komodo dragon and start making it bigger. But that causes problems of its own, such as the mass increasing faster than surface area and bone cross-sections. The creature could overheat or collapse under its own weight. It's extremely complicated to get the DNA sequence perfect so that all the pieces fit and work in harmony as with any ordinary animal. Difficult, but not entirely impossible. Do you think scientists are going a little too far with this? Let me know in the comments. And now for number eight. But first, it's shout out time. I want to give a big thank you to Matthew McNeil and Amelia Ramlo for supporting this channel. Thanks, guys. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about amazing discoveries. Number eight, extinct meat. Everybody knows scientists want to create a woolly mammoth. If there's one animal everyone wants to see brought back to life, it's the mammoth. But what if you could have a mammoth cheeseburger without going through all the trouble of hunting one? It might sound like a grotesque question, but mammoth cheeseburgers could soon be a reality. In 2023, the very first woolly mammoth meatball was put on display at the Nemo Science Museum in Amsterdam. The mammoth meat was created by a biotech company in Australia called Bao. Their scientists generated the meat from myoglobin proteins. It's essentially a cultured meat product, similar to plant-based meat. Retailers all over the world will be selling more meat grown in a laboratory soon, instead of harvested from an animal. The change is already coming in some places. The mammoth meatball was created in the same way that scientists are making lab-grown chicken and beef. This is a huge triumph for the environment, a recent scientific paper found that food culture grown in labs could reduce air pollution by 94%. It would also use 90% less land, which would help in bringing back natural habitats and boosting wildlife. 
The whole thing with the mammoth meatball is to get people excited about eating cultured meat, especially from extinct animals. In the next few years, you could see mammoth meat for sale at the grocery store. The company already tried to create chicken nuggets from the extinct dodo bird, but they didn't have enough DNA at the time. Would you try a mammoth meatball? Let me know in the comments! Number 7. The Dodo Bird The Dodo Bird is the unofficial mascot of extinct species. When European sailors arrived on the island of Mauritius in the 16th century, they brought with them hounds and rats and hunting. In just a few decades, they had hunted the dodo to absolute extinction. The flightless bird was gone before anyone even knew what extinction meant. As the spokesbird of extinct creatures, it would make sense to bring the dodo back to life first. That's exactly what a team of scientists is trying to do. Beth Shapiro at the University of California is the lead scientist at Colossal Biosciences. She and her team are hoping to use gene editing and synthetic biology to bring the dodo bird back. Shapiro has already completed the first important step in the process. The team has fully sequenced the genome of the dodo bird from ancient DNA. The next step was to find the closest living relative of the dodo bird, which turned out to be a species of pigeon. Now, scientists just need to figure out how to program cells from the pigeon with the dead bird's DNA. This has turned out to be significantly more difficult than previously anticipated. They've already been trying for about 10 years, and still no dodo bird. Number 6. Jurassic Park for real Scientists are hard at work trying to bring back recently deceased Ice Age animals. But what if scientists went even further back? Could it be possible to bring dinosaurs back to life using the same technology that will one day resurrect a dodo bird? The answer is yes, of course it will. It may not be for many, many years, but it is entirely possible. Alita Beylul recently discovered fossilized cells embedded in calcified cartilage at the rear of a young hadrosaur's skull. The skull was sitting in a collection at the Museum of the Rockies in Montana, but the creature lived 75 million years ago. It was a duck-billed herbivore that roamed prehistoric Montana. And now, thanks to Alita, scientists have DNA. At least they think they do. Alita and her colleagues released a paper on their findings in early 2020, but the world was dealing with the pandemic and nobody really cared. Three years later, scientists are still on the fence over what was found in the hadrosaur's skull. But science does seem to be pointing at the possibility that raw DNA can be extracted from prehistoric tissue. If that's true, it means scientists will soon possess the building blocks for dinosaurs. How do you feel about a real Jurassic Park? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that subscribe button while you're at it! Number 5. The Tasmanian Tiger The very last thylacine officially died in the 1930s. They had already gone extinct in Australia and Papua New Guinea 2,000 years ago. Only about 5,000 of them remained on the island of Tasmania in the 19th century when British colonists arrived. Within a very short time, they were hunted to the brink of extinction. Then, in 1936, the last living Tasmanian tiger, nicknamed for the thylacine, perished in the Beaumaris Zoo. This happened just months after they were declared a protected species, but it was already too late. The International Union for Conservation of Nature declared the Tasmanian tiger officially extinct in 1982. But there have been a lot of strange sightings in New Zealand since then. People have reported seeing a small striped creature roaming the wilderness. Many believe the thylacine is still alive. But scientists say it's nothing but a fantasy. Fantasy or not, scientists are determined to bring one of the most tragically extinct animals back to life. They have been trying to do it since the beginning of the 21st century. Australian paleontologist Mike Archer extracted DNA from a preserved specimen 20 years ago. He promised he would create a Tasmanian tiger within 10 years, but he only had a budget of $30,000 and never made much headway. Last anyone heard, Mike is currently working in the basement of the University of New South Wales. The Tasmanian tiger was not a tiger, but a predatory marsupial. It may have looked like a large dog, and yes, it had tiger stripes, but it also had a pouch like a kangaroo. Even though scientists failed 20 years ago to bring the Tasmanian tiger back to life, it's a major priority in the world of de-extinction. Number 4. The Irish Elk The Irish Elk died at the end of the Ice Age. 
and although it is called an elk, recent DNA analysis has shown that it was, in fact, a deer. Scientists say it was the largest deer that ever existed. This creature was so massive that its antlers measured 12 feet across. Its antlers were practically the size of a modern moose, though that's being a bit dramatic. Like many other gigantic animals that died in the icy north 10,000 years ago, the Irish elk has been found in abundance preserved in melting permafrost. It's a prime candidate for the process of cloning. It's at the top of the list for researchers to bring back to life, alongside the woolly mammoth and the dodo bird. The big difference is that the Irish elk should perhaps remain extinct. The whole reason it died off in the first place was that its antlers grew out of control. They got so big that the animal couldn't hold its head up anymore. The Irish elk grew an anchor at the top of his head it couldn't move. Or the antlers were so big that they would get caught in the trees and starve to death. What do you think? Is this the kind of animal that should be brought back into the modern world? Or do you think evolution did its job? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Number 3. The Platypus Frog Scientists in Australia resurrected a bizarre species of frog in 2013. Researchers at the University of Newcastle didn't bring the creature back to life in the sense you might be thinking. Instead, they reactivated dead cells inside living ones, reviving the extinct frog's genome. Scientists were able to create fresh, cryopreserved cells to use in future cloning experiments. The creature went extinct in 1983. It was called the platypus frog and was unique for one main reason. After the male frog externally fertilized the female's eggs, the female frog would swallow her own eggs. The eggs then brooded inside the stomach of the female frog. When they were finally ready to be born, they hatched inside the frog's belly and she spat them out of her mouth. This was one of the coolest amphibian species in the world, but it went extinct thanks to what scientists think was a mix of habitat loss and pollution. It's been 10 years, and scientists still haven't brought those frogs back to life using its genome. They do have the DNA needed to clone the frog, but nobody's done it yet. Number 2. The Pyrenean Ibex In January of the year 2000, a tree fell over and landed on the last surviving Pyrenean Ibex, a female named Celia. It was a tragic day for the world as a rogue tree killed off the last of the species. Three and a half years after that, the Pyrenean Ibex went extinct again. Scientists in a Spanish laboratory created a clone of the Ibex, but it died shortly after taking its first breaths. The Ibex was the first extinct species to ever be cloned, then immediately go extinct after the failed cloning process. There are a lot of different species of Ibex in the world. They are a unique type of wild mountain goat that lives throughout Europe and Asia and even Africa. They've lived alongside humans for tens of thousands of years. But the Pyrenean Ibex began to suffer in the 1800s. Too many humans were appearing in France and Spain where they lived, and by 1910 there were only 40 left. Less than a century later, Celia was the very last of her kind. Scientists already knew what was coming, there wasn't much they could do to save Celia, only to plan for the future. They stored her DNA, then attempted to clone her once she was dead. They produced 500 cloned embryos and implanted over 150 of them into female goats. Five of the surrogates got pregnant, and one gave birth. Sadly, the creature only lived for a few seconds. The issue with cloning is that it can create mutations. Even though the core DNA was identical to Celia's, the new Ibex was born with an extra lobe in her left lung. She couldn't breathe properly, and the entire species once more disappeared. Scientist José Fulch wrote a paper about what happened. He described how cloning is not a very effective way to preserve endangered species. At least, not right at this moment. Number 1. The Megalodon An extremely strange story recently appeared online. A mysterious stranger showed up on TikTok claiming to be a time traveler. Whenever you think about the outrageous claim, the alleged time traveler did have some interesting things to say. The traveler claimed to be from the year 2236. They also said that in 2023, scientists would succeed at bringing to life the extinct Megalodon. The traveler also made two very peculiar predictions, or in their case, promises. Human beings will discover alien life in 2025. 
Nine years later, a meteor will impact the Earth and cause great calamity. Most people laughed at the time traveler, but there are those who take this stuff very seriously. 2023 is halfway over and nobody has caught sight of a genetically created megalodon yet, but there are still a few more months to go. Anything's possible. In all seriousness, scientists bringing back a megalodon is just as likely as them bringing back a dinosaur. There are certainly enough megalodon teeth around to harvest DNA, but I don't know what company is doing this. Thanks for watching! Which animal would you like to see brought back to life? Let me know in the comments below! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time! Bye!